Alright, the next part we will be looking at the changes in the exchange rate. So long as supply or demand does not change in the forex market, the equilibrium exchange rate will stay. If there is either a change in the supply or the demand for the domestic currency, there, uh, there will be a corresponding change in the equilibrium exchange rate. So let us look at this example whereby there is an appreciation of the exchange rate. What is meant by appreciation? Due to market forces, there is an increase in the external value of the currency in terms of of other currency so just to recap on the diagram itself right it is just like any market of uh, the market for any commodities so here this is the market for Singapore dollars quantity of Singapore dollars the price of Singapore dollars however it is measured in terms of the current other currency so in this case it is measured in terms of pounds so this is the equilibrium point whereby uh, for one unit of Singapore dollars, it can exchange for 0 0.40 cents or 40 cents pounds in pounds. However, when there is an increase in the demand, when the demand for uh, Singapore dollars increases, it will shift the demand to the right and hence the new equilibrium point or rather in this case you will see that at the original level, 0.440 cents right there is a shortage whereby the quantity demanded of the Singapore dollars is more than the um, quantity supplied of the Singapore dollars because of this shortage it will cause an upward pressure on the uh, price of Sing dollars and hence there is an increase so uh, it is known as the appreciation of the Singapore currency so previously one dollar Singapore one dollar can actually purchase for 40 cent pounds now one dollar can purchase more of for this, uh, of the pounds so more units of uh, foreign currency can be obtained per unit of the home currency in this case we are looking at one unit of sing dollars so on the other hand, the opposite one is actually when there is a depreciation of the exchange rate. It is a fall in the external car uh, value of the currency in the forex market. So this fall in the external value could be caused by an uh, increase in the supply of the Singapore dollars or a decrease in the demand for the Singapore dollars. So let us look at this as, uh, okay, there isn't any example, but I guess in your lecture notes wise, right, for page uh, page 5 so you might want to look at the examples that is given in page 5 and try to understand what is drawn in uh, figure 2b on page 5 on the other hand uh, there is an exchange rate devaluation so what is meant by a devaluation so when the ex equilibrium exchange rate changes in the forex market because of market forces it is known as depreciation or appreciation of the currency however on the other hand if this change in the external in the exchange rate the external value of the currency is due to the deliberate government policy meaning to say that government might maybe buy more um uh, foreign currency and release uh, more singapore dollars in the um in the foreign exchange market so there could be a this is known as a devaluation or a revaluation of the currency so the deliberate government policy the attempt done by the government under a fixed exchange rate system is actually known as a devaluation or a revaluation of the currency. So what is exchange rate revaluation? You might want to look at page 6. Then um, do take some time to actually copy down the points over here in your lecture notes. What is known as exchange rate revaluation? So it is actually an increase in the official external value of the currency in terms of another currency by the government. or They did it through the central bank or the monetary uh, authority. So, what are the determinants that will affect determinants of demand and supply of the currency? The, so, do note that the determinants listed can be rephrased to present either a change in the demand or a change in the supply of the currency in the question. So, likewise, the students or rather you should actually recognize that some of the determinants will um, cause a short-term fluctuations whereby the other's determinant will explain a long-term uh, exchange rate trend. So, let us look at the first one, the relative interest rate. Relative interest rate will have a large influence on the short-term financial flows between the country. So do note that this, when we talk about short-term financial flows, this is known as the hot money, short-term financial capital. So it is reflected in the financial account of the balance of payment. So just to repeat myself again, there is a, it will actually this 
relative changes in the changes in the relative interest rate will actually cause a uh, a change in the short-term financial flow, i.e. known as the out money, and it is reflected in the financial account of the balance of payment. So suppose that the U, uh, the British, or rather the UK, there is an increase in the short-term uh, interest rate. So what will happen is the interest rate will be above the rates in most of the other countries, and because of this, right, there will be an inflow of the hot money into UK, meaning to say that this will attract the inflow of speculative or people speculate in the monies so hence they will change their own currency or domestic currency in exchange for pounds i.e there is an increase in the demand for pound and therefore the exchange rate for pound will increases will increase so if you were to look at this diagram so uh, there will be an increase in the demand for pound because of the higher interest rate relative to the other countries. So this will lead to an appreciation of the pound. So the pound in terms of the Sing dollars, it will appreciate, i.e. we have to use more of the Sing dollars to change for the same unit of pound. On the other hand, in the forex or the foreign exchange market, right, what happened is how do we exchange for the pound? Meaning to say, the country or rather, as an investor in Singapore, I will actually give up my give up my uh Singapore dot uh, currency. So I will it exchange for uh, I will use Singapore I will use Singapore dollars to exchange for pounds. So in this case, there is an increase in in the Singapore dollars. With the increase in the Singapore dollar, uh, in the supply of Singapore dollars, with the increase in the supply of Singapore dollars, this will actually lead to a depreciation of the Sing dollars. So depreciation of the Sing dollars, meaning to say, uh, with the same unit of Sing dollars, same unit of Sing dollars, I will have to use or rather a a lower. A smaller sum of the pound will be exchanged for the same unit of the Sing dollars. Okay, because of the differences in the relative interest rate between the two different economies, sometimes the speculators or the institutional investor will borrow currency with a lower interest rate and put them into currency which offer a higher interest rates and thereby making a profit on the difference. This is known as a uh, interest rate arbitrage. So the government may vary the rate of interest in order to attract or to rebel the short-term financial capital flow as it seems fit. So. Uh, uh, there is a note uh, on page 7 of the lecture notes that, that you might want to look through and regarding the Singapore, the nature of the Singapore economy being small and open, Singapore is actually an interest rate taker in the global economy. Next, it is the currency speculation. So what is meant by currency speculation? For example, uh, a speculator will anticipate that Singapore dollars will depreciate in future. So they will do something known as short selling. What they will do is to buy the asset. No, we uh, they will sell off the asset. In this case, right, for the Sing dollars, right, because the value is still higher right now as compared to what they anticipate the depreciation in future. So because of the value in Sing dollars now, the investor or the uh, speculators they will um, sell off the sing dollars and later on when the sing dollars depreciate right they will purchase back the sing dollars at a later uh, at a lower price due to these differences in the price um, value of the sing dollars right the speculator will earn the money in between so George Soros he was the man in uh, 1992 that he actually uh, made US $1 million by betting against the British pound. So in this case, right, he actually um, speculate or rather anticipate that, anticipated that the British pound uh, will depreciate. So hence, so he actually sell off the British pound dollars and later on purchase them at a higher price level. So he was accused of playing a part in the Asia financial crisis, but it was, uh, it was accusation in the first place so what is meant by short selling as i mentioned just now a borrow money from b so he sell uh, the money to the c at two dollars then later on what will happen is when the money falls to one dollar a will buy and return the money back to b so what happened in between is the difference of the one dollars right is being earned by a so this is known as short selling it is a kind of speculative um actions all right. Um, the next determiner will be the relative income changes. 
So do note the word relative because you are actually comparing the changes in the income with in one, one country compared to another country. So for example, if there is an increase in the income in US relative to UK, meaning to say that um, increase in income is higher in Singapore than UK, so this will actually increase the demand for ex uh, UK export. Um, this means that with a higher income in Singapore, they demand for more of the imports from the UK. So because of this, for the Singaporeans to purchase the UK products, what they need to do is to exchange the uh, Singapore currency for the uh, pound, British pound. So this will increase the demand of uh, British pound and increase the supply of Singapore currency in the foreign exchange market. So this will lead to a depreciation of the Sing dollars and an appreciation. On the other hand, it is an appreciation of the British pound. So thus, it means to say that if the growth of a nation income is more rapid than that of other country, its currency is likely to depreciate uh, in future. Next will be the relative price changes. So the purchasing power parity the theory states that uh, it holds when the exchange rate between two national currency adjusts to reflect the differences in the price level in two countries. It means to say that the exchange rate settles at a level which makes the purchasing power of a given unit of the currency the same in whatever country it is spent. So to make it clearer, just assume that in US that one marker costs USD or one dollars. In UK, a marker will cost um um two dollars in British pound. So assume that the interest rate is US one dollars equals to British pound two dollars. Inflation in US, the GPL price level increased by ten percent. However, on the other hand, UK, um, general price level increases by twenty percent. So what will happen is, um, you will realize that. With the changes in the price level, the US marker will cost one uh one dollars and ten cent. In UK itself, the marker will cost two dollars and forty cent in British pound. So it is cheaper to buy the marker in US and and uh the UK consumer will demand more of the US dollars and hence um US dollars will appreciate. As such, the new exchange rate is US one dollars equals to British pound two dollars and eighteen cent. So the US dollars has appreciated against the pound and the pound has depreciated uh, against the US dollars. So the home currency in terms of foreign currency, i.e. the pound per US dollars is given by the domestic price level divided by the foreign price level. It means that the ratio between the domestic price level and the foreign price level, this will equivalent to the purchasing power parity exchange rate. So it means that if the same basket of goods costs uh, USD $100 in US and UK, in UK it costs 200 British pound, right? The PPP theory states that the US $1 is equivalent to British pound $2. However, uh, the PPTP theory ignores a number of implications. The first one is the changes in the transport costs and the trade restrictions such as tariff and quotas. It can actually upset the PPP uh, prediction. For example, if British prices increase faster than the price in the US, but at the same time, tariffs are also imposed to keep the American goods out of the UK market, then the pound might not have to depreciate relative to the US dollars. Next, uh, the basket of goods which determine the domestic price level is different from those that is uh, that are traded internationally. So not all the goods are internationally traded, and uh, so it implies that the domestic inflation rate may have little bearings on the exchange rate. The next point, it is the price differences could be due to the differences in the quality of the goods across the country, i.e. this is actually a lack of homogeneity homogeneity of the products. So the theory assumed that the basket of goods uh, to be uniform. However, on the same at the same time, uh, like for example, Volvo and Chrysler right, can hardly be considered identical. So a faster rise in the price of the Chrysler right, did not drive it out of the market if the consumer perceived the quality differences and other differences between the products. The last point will be the relative price changes is not only determined determined by the exchange rate. So there are other factors that are more uh, important, such as um, the relative price level for the exchange rate determination, as well as the speculation uh, in the short short run. So this is known as speculation. 
So there are some other points, factors that I did not explain and it is actually explained in the lecture notes like balance of payment uh, performance, uh, for FDI and changes in taste and preference. So I'll leave it to you to actually read through your lecture notes and ask me if there is any question. Thank you.